I'm Selena, and today I'm going to talk about the popular books I did not finish. This video could ruffle some feathers because I am going to be talking about some booktube favorites. I'm very sorry if one of your favorite books is on this list, and for many, I'm sorry, but to say that it might be. Um, but just know that no disrespect or harm is intended. I just didn't really like these books and they weren't for me. I have nine books to talk about, so let's just get started. The first one I DNF so long ago that I do not know that I can tell you exactly why I DNF'd it. I don't even know if I really DNF'd it. I may have finished this book out. And that book is The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman, or I think it's called Northern Lights in the UK. I didn't really like this book. I can't exactly tell you why I didn't like this specific book, but I did just read a companion book to this series, like a companion novella for class. And I can tell you why I didn't like that one. I didn't like the world. I didn't like Philip Pullman's writing. I remember distinctly not liking either of those things with this book as well. His Dark Materials really just bored me <laughs> when I was reading this at age 14. Maybe it wouldn't if I went back to it now, but then again, I hated that novella so much. I don't think I'll ever give the series another chance. So this is a very permanent DNF until further notice, but I really, 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 really hated this book. I did not enjoy anything about it. And it's just not, it's just not for me. It's not for me. The next couple are books that I all DNF'd like really, really early. And I'm not, I mean, I am pretty committed to not coming back to them. And the first one I'm going to talk about is The Savage Song by V.E. Schwab. I don't really have too many reasons for this. I just wasn't vibing with the main character's voice. And this may have been because it was on audio. I don't know. But I really just wasn't vibing with the world or the main character immediately. So I put it down. Oh, I just remembered another book. <gasps> Mm. And then the next two are from the same author and they are When the Moon Was Ours and Wild Beauty by Anna, McL Anna Marie McLemore. I have not read any more of this author's books, but I didn't really enjoy what I read of these. I barely got into these books, but I don't really love the sort of lush style of writing that this author uses. So I know that so many people love these books and so many people love that writing style and this style of story, which seems to be very sort of plotless and that's fine. I support people loving these books wholeheartedly. They just really were not for me and so I just put them down rather than push through and give them kind of an average or bad rating because I don't feel like that's fair. So I just did not finish these. I'm sad I didn't like them because I spent money on both of them and yeah I'm just bummed out that I didn't like them. And then particularly with When the Moon Was Ours there was a disturbing aspect of like body horror to it which just really upset me for like very personal reasons. So like I couldn't continue with that one because of that reason. Wild Beauty didn't have anything like that from what I saw, but um, I didn't, I still didn't connect with the author's writing or plot or anything. So I DNF that one as well. The next two are books that I got through pretty good chunks of them, but I not, I didn't finish them obviously. And they were, I was still in the beginning sort of portion of them. The first one I'm going to talk about is another Victoria Schwab book, and that is A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. So this is the third book in the A Dark Shade of Magic series. I know people love A Dark Shade of Magic so much, and I just don't. I gave both the books three stars, and I thought book one was pretty mediocre, and book number two was fine enough. It was fun enough for me to continue, but book three was just not. I thought book three had an interesting premise when I started it, but I just found that I wasn't invested in the plot or the characters at all enough for me to push through something that was so long. Like Conjuring of Light, I think is like 500 or 600 pages. And I just did not want to push through something so long for so little gratification. Like I didn't care enough to see the book through. Basically that's what that comes down to. I just thought of another book that I DNF'd. Why didn't I put anything on this list that I DNF'd? Along with DNFing two books by V.E. Schwab and Anna Marie Lick McLemore, I've also DNF'd two books from Lainey Taylor. So the first one of those was Dreams of Gods and Monsters, which is the third book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. I really enjoyed Daughter of Smoke and Bone and Days of Blood and Starlight. I gave the first one three, 3.5 stars and the second one four stars, but I didn't rate the third one because I didn't finish it. I did get a good chunk of, of the way through into the third one, but it was just so big. And I did find that I wanted to know what happened to the characters. I was really attached to the characters, but it was a hard time for me. Like I was about to do surgery and I just wasn't interested in reading that much anyways. And so to read that really thick book was not in the cards for me. And then it also plot wise started adding in other threads other than the one we've been following for two books. And I didn't love that as much. 
And so I DNF'd the book right around when those threads came in and never finished Dreams of Gods and Monsters. I'm not opposed to going back and rereading the series, but there's just so many other series that I would rather read for the first time or reread that I just don't ever think I will. So Dreams of Gods and Monsters will probably always be a permanent DNF. Another one I got barely into but is a Delaney Taylor book is Strange the Dreamer. I got a few pages into this and her writing style was just not for me. I thought it was sort of ridiculous to be honest. I thought that the amount of words she used for literally things that didn't matter was a lot and I was bored like in the first couple pages. I knew that there wasn't a huge plot for this and I pretty much at this point knew this book wasn't for me. I only had it and tried it because I'd had it for years. I bought it before I knew my reading taste. This is the same with a lot of other books like Anna Marie McLean Morris books and Strange to Dreamer, Victoria Schwab. Like a lot of these books I would not buy now, but when I first joined like watching booktube, when I first started watching booktube, I was buying what everyone was hyping and those were some books that everyone was hyping. So I bought them assuming that my reading tastes were the same as people I liked on the the booktube and they just weren't. It's still sad that I didn't connect with those books, but yeah. Next two are ones that I also got a very small amount of the way in. First one is Called Down the Hawk by Maggie Steve Otter. This is the Dreamer trilogy, which is the sequel trilogy to the Raven Cycle quartet. And so basically I love the Raven Cycle. It was my favorite series at one point. I have reread it already. I, I love the Raven, Raven Cycle. But I didn't really like the first couple chapters of Call Down the Hawk. I just found it more pretentious than the Raven Cycle in writing. And I didn't really enjoy, like, I think I've just grown out of these books and her writing. And I didn't feel like I needed more. I didn't feel like I needed to re-experience or see more of what she was planning to do with Call Down the Hawk in that world. And so I just put it down and got rid of it. And then the next one is Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. I hated this writing style. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the plot. I did get like probably like 50 to like 75 or 80 pages into this and it just was not for me. I disliked the world and the magic was sort of boring to me. I don't know. I didn't like this writing style. I didn't like anything really about this book and it was also around the time that I had surgery. I had just had surgery sort of around the dreams of gods and monsters time period and I just both of those books really just were not for me at that time. Foundry Side especially reading it was making me feel more physically sick and so that's like I don't know if that was a coincidence or what but it was like um it, it, it really is messed with my perception of that book so I don't think I'll ever be able to return to that one without feeling like I'm gonna throw up. I don't know. And then the final two are ones that I got a long ways in before I gave up because I wanted to love them so bad. They're both YA contemporary and I, one of them is really hyped and one of them is not. We're going to talk about the one that is not first. And I've talked about this one before, but that book is the book that I DNF'd and hated so much. It's like one of my most hated books is Symptoms of Being Human by Jeff Garvin. I, they, I had a lot of issues with this book. I don't want to get too in depth with them. I'm pretty sure I have a really detailed spoilery Goodreads review and I will link that. Basically, I wasn't happy with the representation in this book. And we do follow a gender fluid protagonist in this. I'm not gender fluid, so I can't really speak to especially that. However, reading Goodreads reviews from gender fluid people, people didn't like this representation. And the representation of the LGBTQ plus community as a whole, um, I thought was really just done poorly. The online section of the community, the physical like in-person section of the community, the places we meet, like it just was really not accurate and it felt sort of cringy to me and it wasn't true to my experience as someone who has been on especially the online side of the LGBTQ plus community in my generation. Like what it looks like for my generation is what it, what this author was trying to write for the character and it just was not, it, it did not work and I didn't like it. And then like 77% of the way through the book, something really triggering happens without really any warning. And I just wasn't expecting the book to get this dark or painful. And I'm sure that some people really would benefit from seeing this. I know a lot of people did not benefit from this book and did not enjoy that those things happened. And once that happened, I had to quit. I could not continue to listen to this book. 
So I, but I returned it back to my library and was happy that I did not buy the physical copy. And then the final book on this video, possibly the most hyped book of the whole video that is one of booktube's favorite books by one of booktube's favorite authors and that book is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I DNF'd it. I did not finish Radio Silence. I know, I know. I think I got like 250 to like 300 pages. I was over halfway. I only had like a hundred and something pages left and I just didn't really like it. I had read a lot of YA contemporary that I loved recently, like when I had just, when I started to read Radio Silence, I had just read The Hate You Give and Eliza and Her Monsters, and I had loved those. And so I was so excited for Radio Silence because this is when Radio Silence had just started to get a lot of hype um, that kind of stemmed from Paperback Dreams, Cat talking about it so much. And I loved Paperback Dreams. I still think um, Cat's channel is great, but I don't like, Cat's <laughs> favorite book. <laughs> so this book had no plot and so it wasn't really for me because I like my books to have a, a stronger plot than what Radio Silence had. And then I just thought that the drama between the two, the two main characters was sort of hard. Like it was really hard for me to get behind them. And then one of them in particular who like everyone freaking loves, I did not like at all. I thought that he was so rude unnecessarily and I understood that he was struggling, but that wasn't an excuse for him to treat everyone the way he did. And I have like experiences with that basically and this book basically touched those experiences in the wrong way. And I did not like them. There was weird stuff in here that I just did not enjoy with him. And you can see why he was the way he was. And he had this awful parent and something she did was basically the thing that pushed this book over the edge to me from something I wasn't really enjoying to something I could not continue reading. And I just noticed that like in a really personal way, this book had really messed with my mental health um, because of the things that that main character was doing and because of the things that his mom was doing, it was really hard for me to continue. And when I put the book down, took time away from it and did not come back to it, my mental health improved a lot. It, for the couple days I was reading that book, it was, it was really bad. And so like when a book affects me personally, like and affects my day-to-day -day life, I, I don't feel the need to push myself through it. Like my health and safety and stuff is more important than that. And so I just, didn't finish Radio Silence because it made me feel so awful and because I hated so many either actions that happened or so many things the characters did and like said and stuff. I don't know, I didn't like it. And yeah, I didn't finish it. If I had finished it though, it would have been a really low rating, like a really low rating. In the end, I'm actually happy that I do DNF and I'm always happier when I do it. Sometimes I do go back and finish a book if it was sort of like, calling me to finish it but a lot of times I won't and I do think that's better than me pushing through a book I know I'm not liking and giving the author a bad rating. Usually when I finish books that I don't like I either have to for school or because I just I don't know maybe I hold out hope that it can be better or I want to I, I have the other series books in the series I don't know but yeah that's my video about the popular books that I DNF'd. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye! Thank you.